Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to look at searching by dates, specifically when we have a query where we're using the between keyword to look for orders between two dates, and it's giving us the wrong results. Today's question comes from Jorge from Grand Forks, North Dakota, a silver member. Jorge says, I have an order date field in my order table. I'm using the now function to set the default order date so that I don't have to type it in every time I create a new order. The problem is, whenever I try to run a query showing all of my orders between two dates, the orders on the last date don't show up. This happens whether I use the between keyword or inequalities. What am I doing wrong? And that should be a question. Well, Jorge, there's a couple of things it could be. And since you emailed me privately and sent me a sample of your data, I know exactly what it is. But let me explain what's happening for you and all the folks at home. This is a common problem, and I see it a lot. OK, here's my simple database that I use as my free customer template. You can download this from my website. And I've got real simple customers, orders, contacts in here. Let's go to my order table. Design view. Now, I don't have order date in here because, again, this is just a simple database for training. But I'm going to add order date. That'll be a date time field. And I'll put the default value down here equal to now. That puts the date and time in that field when new records are created. Let's save that. Now is accurate to the second. Let's go into my order table now. And let's put some dates in here. All right, let's say we've got 10, 1, 20 for an order. We'll do 10, 15. 20, let's do 10, 31, 20, and so on. Maybe to 11, 1, we'll do 11, 15. Let's put a couple earlier ones in here, 9, 1, whoops, 9, 1, 9, 10, and so on. We're going to search for all the orders from October, okay? There should be three of them when I do my query. So let's make the query next. Save changes, yep. Let's go into create. Query design, bring in my order table. And if you don't know how to do this, by the way, I've got lots of lessons on making queries, using query parameters, which we're going to do in a second here, and other videos on searching. I'll put links in the description below the video for you to follow and watch those for free. Now let's bring down into the query order ID and order date. That's all I care about right now. I just want to see the ID and the date the order was placed. If I run the query right now, you'll see there's all my results. Now I want to limit this to see only the orders from October. So let's go back to design view. I'm going to come down here for criteria. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. You can hard code the dates in there. You can say between and then inside of hashtags or pound signs or octothorps, whatever you want to call them. I can say 10, 1, 2020 and 10, 31. 2020, just like that. That's if you want to hard code the dates. All right, let's save the query. I'll call this my order queue. And now when I run it, there's my three records. Ignore the new record on the bottom. That's just a new blank record coming in there. But there you can see there's all the orders, the three orders from October. That's one way you can do it. The second way you can do it is you can come in here and you can say between and have the user type in the dates every time you run the query. This is called a parameter query. I could say between start date and end date. Whatever you type in between those square brackets becomes the prompts. Now, if I save the query and run it, all right, I can type in the start date, 10 1. If you don't put a year in there, Access assumes the current system year 10 1 and 10 31. And there you go. There's the three of those again. And what Jorge meant by inequalities is you can also say, like this, you can say greater than or equal to start date and less than or equal to end date. It's the same thing. And if I run it again, 10, 30, or 10, 1, and 10, 31. And there we go. There's all three of them. Now, why is Jorge having a problem? Well, the problem isn't how Jorge is setting up the criteria. The problem is with the data in the table. Let's close the query for just a minute. Let's take a look at the table, order T. Look at this blank, brand new record that's coming in. We used the now function to put a default value in there. Right now, it is 1028 at 511.41 PM. That's the exact system time that I have. 
So let's say an order comes in right now. So customer ID 4, the order amount is $400. And it is now 1028. See, the next record will get 512. Let's say I want to see a list of all the orders from 101 to 1028, today's date. All right, 1028. So if I run my query, 101 to 1028. I'm not seeing it. There's the blank new record, but I'm not seeing my record for $400. Okay, why is that? Well, if you look at the data, 1028 and five hours later, that's greater than 1028. Remember, days are the same as saying this day at midnight. So if you're using now, you're putting a time in there. That time is technically after 1028 at midnight. If I were to, let's delete these records here, okay? If I were to put 1021 and 6 p.m. in there and then run that query, right? 101 to 1031, I don't see it because 1031 is before 1031 at 6 p.m. Remember, midnight is the default. So there's a couple of ways you can fix this. The first thing that I would recommend is to not store times in your orders. Instead of using the now function, use the date function instead. All right, come in here, order date, and use equals date instead. All right, that's, that's the best thing to do for orders. Unless, of course, you need to track orders to the second. And I've had clients that had to do that. They want to know exactly what time of the day an order came in. So if that's what you're going to do, you have to make sure you add one to your end date. Either train your users to type in one day ahead, or you can add one to your end date. Now, you can't just add one here like this. I'll show you why. When I run this now, all right, 10-1, 10-31, you get this. The expression is typed incorrectly. Why? Well, that's because end date comes in as text, and you can't add one to text. So you have to convert that text value over to a valid date. And we can do that with the C date function. So say C date of the end date like that plus one. All right, run that 10 1 to 10 31, and now I'm good. The problem with that is now I'm seeing 11 1 as well. Because 10 1 plus 1 is 11 1. So in this scenario, you have to make sure not to use the equal sign. See that? It has to be greater than or equal to start date and less than C date plus 1. This will make sure all the records that you see are greater than or equal to 10 1 and less than but not equal to 11 1. So again, if I run the query now, 10 1. To, uh, to 1031, there you go. I don't see 111. This also means now that you have to use the inequality symbols. You can't say between start date and C date, end date plus one, because if you do that, it will include 111, because between includes the endpoints. So you have to use the inequalities. You can't use between anymore. Another way you could do that is to create a second field that has just the date portion in it, and then you can continue to use the between keyword. Or again, if you decide you don't need those times, you can go through and just delete them out of your table. Both of those techniques I will show in the extended cut for members. In the extended cut for members, we will build a date only query field so you can keep those times and then make a second date in your queries that has only the date portion. That's handy because then it makes all of your date calculations much easier and you don't have to worry about that time problem. And then secondly, if you decide you don't want those times, if you only want the dates stored in your table, I'll show you how to fix it. We'll change that now back to a date and I'll show you how to create an update query to remove all of the time portions from those date values. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. 
After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. But don't worry, these Tech Help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to share it wherever you think it might help people who are interested in access. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to be notified every time I post a new video. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link below to join my mailing list. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over three hours long, and you can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and that is free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. If you have a specific problem you need help with, or you'd like to discuss having a database built for your needs, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consulting. Be sure to follow my blog and find me on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.